you know, I, did, I don't have a college degree. I dropped out. Um, so I was trying to find a way in that was fast and, you know, and quick because I, I wasn't going back to school. So uh, found me a boot camp and, you know, made my way through that pretty quickly uh, and just used the skills I already had to kind of, you know, coincide with what was already there. And I was able to break in pretty quick. Hello everyone, this is Aliyah Nichelle with Breaking Into Tech, and I'm really excited to bring on my next guest today. You know how we do, we always talk about not only the tech industry, but actually how you can break in without having a traditional background. So I did not bring on an individual who previously has a technical background, similar to myself. This gentleman has a very unique journey, and not only that, he was able to scale and start his own business. So I'm excited for you all to learn a little bit more about this individual and take some tips away and help you break into tech. All right. If you're tuning in, I want you all to drop in the chat exactly where you're located. I know we've had people from Venezuela before, Pakistan, of course, the the, the United States, North Carolina is where I'm from. Bull City is where I was raised, <laughs> but I'm from Jersey by way. Like, so, you know, I can still do some of those dances. I don't know. I don't know all of them, but we're not going to do that today. <laughs> all right. Without further ado, I want to introduce you all to my next guest and welcome aboard. Hey, hey, what's up, what's up? What's up, how you doing? Doing pretty good, pretty good. How you doing today? Doing great, doing great. All right, so so I will not butcher your name. Can you please tell us your name, your first and last name? So my name is Damon Coleman. You know, okay. a lot of people get that Damon part wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's phonetically correct. Um, my name is not spelled phonetically correct, so I can understand how people mess that up. Um, but yeah, I just want to make sure that we got it. So Damon, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, yourself? Um, we got your name, but tell us, start, start off by telling us where you're from. Yeah, so I'm from, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, you know, from the Midwest. Uh, I'm an account executive now, so I'm you know, happy about that. Uh, and, you know, founder of a, a, a huge company to be, the Black Tech Retreat. So happy That's to, great. you know, jump on with you. We're going to speak that into existence, right? All right. So, um, Damon, like I was telling our our, um, our viewers, you don't come from a traditional tech background, right? And this is one of the reasons yeah. why I wanted to bring you on. But um, you have a very unique background. And I've actually never interviewed anyone with your background before. So can you tell us exactly what you were doing before tech and how long you've been in tech? So I've technically been in tech for about, what, almost six months maybe almost six months um but i came from the logistics industry so i was in uh the trucking industry i did dispatching for uh 18 wheelers and things like that and before that i was actually doing logistics for an amazon company amazon delivery service and i you know started my own company as an independent dispatcher and did that for a few years and you know kind of got tired of that and that's kind of how i you know wiggle my way into the tech industry. That's really cool. So I know uh, the logistics industry was blown up during the pandemic because everyone wanted to be a, a truck driver or a dispatcher or whatnot. And, you know, I even have uh, family family members who started companies. So I've heard all of the great stories and all of the horror stories. So I love yeah. that. Though. But now with that background, you said you got a little tired of that. Like, what exactly motivated you to break into tech? And you, how did you scale to be a, an account manager in less than six months? We, we need to unpack that. So, yeah. So what I originally, the reason I left the logistics industry was just because of the, the time frame. You know, I wanted to build my life a certain way. And uh, how I got to that was, you know, I moved over to Bali for, I was over there for 11 months while I was doing my, uh, doing the logistics thing. So, that kind of showed me the lifestyle I wanted and, you know, doing trucking, it's like you're on call 24 seven, you know, it's like no downtime, uh, no days off. Like you can get phone calls at two, three o'clock in the morning, you know, you can't really spend time with your family like you want to, cause you gotta, you know, constantly be by your phone. And, you know, I got tired of that. You know, the money was good. Don't get me wrong. Like the money was good. You know, like you said, during the pandemic, it was, it was booming, you know, so it was making good money, but you know, at what cost, you know, you don't really have a life 
Um, so that's kind of one of the ways I, I'm like, I got to transition out of this industry and find one that still makes still money, but gives me more of that work-life balance. And that's kind of how I, you know, started looking into tech. You know, I originally thought that you had to be technical to, you know, to get into tech. Um, you had to be like a programmer, coder, things like that. Um, but once I dove deeper into it, I seen that, okay, it, it's a few skills that I have that, you know, would translate over into the tech industry, you know, so I started looking around for things that, you know, not tech, non-technical roles. And that's how I came across, you know, tech sales. And, you know, it was pretty much similar to what I was doing in the logistics industry anyway, by, you know, making phone calls all day, connecting with people and, you know, selling them on my services, but now I'm selling them on someone else's services. So it was, you know, pretty much like, like the same thing to me. Um, and, you know, I, I came in as an SDR um, and I was an SDR for two months, you know, and I was working for a company in cybersecurity, which that's where I thought I wanted to be in cybersecurity because I was chasing the money. You know? Come on, I was about to say, let's be real. Yeah. Everybody was like, oh, right. <laughs> you don't want to do cybersecurity. You want that bad. Yeah. I did get a, exactly. I got an offer as well as an SDR before in cybersecurity, and that was a $100,000 offer basically salary which is crazy but i didn't yeah. know nothing i was like i'm about to be trash at this because i don't know how to <laughs> i don't know how to speak to the uh technology so i respect that a lot that you moved out of that role and it sounds like you moved on to a, a, a progressed actually to a new role being an account executive and i know you said you spent 11 months in bali we're not going to just skirt past because <laughs> that is something that a lot of individuals do not get an opportunity to do. And we'll definitely talk a little bit more about that because um, of course, you know, we have you as the founder of the Black Tech Retreat and I'm sure that has something to do with it. But um, it sounds like you uh, got exposed to tech sales. Um, did you go the traditional route um, by uh, taking a boot camp, or did you upskill or bootstrap yourself? So what I did was I took a boot camp. You know, I, did, I don't have a college degree. I dropped out. Um, so I was trying to find a way in that was fast and, you know, and quick because I, I wasn't going back to school. So uh, found me a boot camp and, you know, made my way through that pretty quickly uh, and just used the skills I already had to kind of, you know, coincide with what was already there. And I was able to break in pretty quick. Love that. So how long did it take you from starting your boot camp or the end of your boot camp to actually breaking in? Uh, from... The end of the boot camp, I would say a couple of weeks, but like I say, in total, for me getting the getting the actual course and completing it, uh, and then starting the job, I would say sixty days. Uh, it took me sixty days to break in, um, but I technically had job offers before I actually finished the course. Technically, I never finished the course because I started working before I finished the course. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty quick process for me. So I used the hustle I had, you know, from the trucking industry and just put that, you know, to the tech industry. Exactly. And I actually used to be a sales representative for a logistics company as well. So I definitely agree with you that it is the same exact thing. It's the same type of hustle. And it's actually a great foundation. So with that being said, being that you already had that um, sales experience um, and that, you know, that hunger, that grit, because you almost have to get your own clients in that in that space as well. Do you feel like that was more a contributor to you landing those roles before you finished that boot camp? Or do you feel like the boot camp was you know, the icing on the cake or? I felt like the boot camp was kind of the icing on the cake because it, it gave me the the terms and the, uh, I would say the the right words to use in the industry. You know, it, it gave me those tools that I didn't quite have. I had like the rough tools, but, you know, it made it, everything make a little more sense by going more in depth to the actual tech industry. So the boot camp definitely helped, uh, but a lot of the skills I did have, but it didn't translate. I couldn't get it to translate, you know, the way I wanted to. So that boot camp was able to, you know, help me hone in those skills and, you know, make it transferable to what I was already doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's awesome. Um, I actually took a boot camp myself as well um, to get into the industry. For those who don't know, I'm a solutions architect and I worked as, uh, as an HR professional for nine years before. Did a little bit of everything from HR project management to recruitment. Um, and I definitely have sales experience as well, but I utilize a lot of my previous transferable skills to help me get into the role on um, being a solutions architect. We deal with clients a lot. We're consulting, we're doing presentations, and then I upskill with some 
um, some uh, courses outside of the boot camp. Um, like I use Code Academy just to learn a programming language very foundationally, and that helped me. And I was able to build like some projects on the side to kind of talk to my uh, technical skills. So I think that just like what um, you said, Demond, like having that that skill set already, and then maybe mir uh, mirroring that with the boot camp can help you uh, give you the secret sauce that you need. But you don't necessarily need to finish those. Um, sometimes you don't need to go to the boot camp at all, but sometimes you do need that to kind of like push you to the next step. And I had the very same results as you did, where I'm not even finishing the first week of that boot camp. I already was getting interviews, and I already had an offer. So I think that's um, that can speak to uh, that can help a lot of people get some clarity there. But with that being said, I don't really just do these interviews so we can promote the a, a boot camp only or solely. I want everyone to know that there are certain things that they can do on their own to help them break into tech. So what are some of the things that you did to help you stand out? Can you give us like one to three? Of those things uh, a couple of things i did to stand out was you know reaching out directly to like these sales managers vp of sales and like recruiters so i reached out directly versus you know just putting our applications and waiting uh most of the time i reached out before i even you know did the application um and sometimes i had the interview before i even did the application you know so uh i did that i, I did a lot of YouTube University, you know, learning on YouTube and figuring out how to, you know, put all my skills in order to make it look presentable for um, more of a, a professional company because with my background, I'm not, you know, I only come from the corporate world. Uh, I, I always either own my own business or worked in, you know, in logistics. So uh, fixing my, you know, my resume the right way and things like that was, was a huge part of, you know, I think me learning the, the right job. Okay. Did you happen to have anybody that helped you along the way, um, like any mentors or anybody that you feel that you can call a mentor? Uh, I didn't really have, uh, I would say, a mentor, but I just had people that I, that I watched a lot. Like I watched, uh, it kind of gave me motivation. I would say, like I watched uh, Take Is a New Black. That was, you know, that was a lot of motivation seeing so many people that look like me uh, get these positions, and then uh, I watched. Uh, Black Heights, a lot of his YouTube uh, stuff, and those were, you know, the two that I kind of looked at to help me, you know, kind of weave my way through. But that was about it. I wouldn't have a direct mentor. Okay, so honestly, it sounds like you're very self motivated. Um, but some of the things that I think people can take away from that is just being prepared, being hungry, and then also getting clear on on your vision. So you already knew that you had those sales, that sales experience by working in the logistics industry, and you was able to apply that same hunger and started to reach out to people, recruiters ahead of time before even applying to build those relationships. So if I, if I could say anything, I would start with uh, making sure that you um are building those relationships ahead of time. You said something about getting your resume in order and making sure you're matching the terminology of that industry and the culture. You said that boot camp helped you. And then even though you didn't have a direct mentor, you did find mentors through those podcasts, through YouTube University, et cetera. So I love that. Now, our tech explorers are always going to be looking for uh, those different tips. So um, did, did you pick up any books along the way? Um, can you mention any of those or... Now, if you don't, if you uh, didn't pick up books, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm just trying to get. Yeah, I, I ain't really, I ain't really getting tech books. I did get, you know, a few sales books, you know, okay. uh, but nothing really tech related. Okay, all right. So yeah, um, that's fine. But I know if you guys are interested in any of the books, one that I would recommend um, is the the medic book. Um, so that teaches you about uh, different uh, sales uh, sales methodology. So yeah. Now let's get into, let's go back a little bit. So you talked about being in Bali, Indonesia, Indonesia for 11 months. Um, and then of course you are the founder of the Black Tech Retreat. Talk to me about that. What, how did you end up in Bali and what did you do in Bali and what motivated you to start this company? So uh, my story to get into Bali was kind of kind of crazy. It was like a last minute thing. I always wanted to go to Bali uh, and I had you know been looking into it for years, but it was just like a last minute thing. I'm like, we're, you know, we're in the uh, middle of a pandemic. You know, it was extremely hard to get over there, but I'm like, I'm just going, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna go for one month. He was like, uh, you know, just relax a little bit, you know, cause I'm in the logistics. So it's like constant stress. So my whole thing was just to go over there and relax for like a month. 
Uh, but I got over there and it was just like, it was, it was just amazing. It was, it was too good to be true. You know, it was all the things that I thought it was. Um, so I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't make myself leave, you know, so every month and it's time for me to like, uh, renew my visa or, or, or it's time for me to, you know, book a flight. It was like, I couldn't do it, you know, so like, it just keep going month after month after month, you know, finding these you know, great deals on places to stay, just, you know, finding, you know, meeting with so many different people and, you know, getting with a community that looks like me too, because I didn't know that it was such a big black community over there as well. That's what, that was a question that I was going to ask. And also, were you working the whole time or? So the, the first, the first month and a half, two months, I didn't really work. It was just, you know, small things. Um, but closer to the end, I did, you know, I did start working a little bit more. Um, but I had a contract uh, with the, in the oil field, so it kind of held me over for most of the time I was there. I didn't have to do too much work, but you know, I would still have to work sometimes, and I would be up to you know three, four o'clock in the morning because of the time difference. Mm. Um, so that was that was a huge part. But it actually is kind of beneficial because when any issues happened, that would technically be overnight in the U.S was you know midday early morning for me in bali so it kind of you know it worked out um but that that really just showed me the lifestyle i wanted you know living over there and being at the you know the cost of living being low enough for me to you know live like i'm a millionaire you know but not we're not millionaire money you know so that was, that was a huge part for me and that community i was able to build over there just showed me what I wanted in life and then also show me what type of business I wanted to build as well. So that kind of got me into the idea of this black tech retreat. Okay. Um, just because the the people that I met over there and the way I was able to connect with people was on a, a deeper level than it was when I'm just like, you know, in my own city or uh, just going to like a networking event, things like that. Because, you know, I'm with these people for days or at, at a time, you know, months at a time. And just able to, you know, really connect with people on a different level. And I want to be able to bring that to, you know, our community and then people that haven't traveled as much, you know, just be able to build those deep connections with people all over the world. That's awesome. So I love that so much because when you answer so many questions that I had, one, was there a, a big African-American presence or a Black presence, not even just African-American, right? Um, so you answered that. And then I love traveling that same way where I travel to different countries where I can, you know, basically live like a like a, a billionaire or a princess, if you will. Um, so I, I really love that about Bali. I've never been myself, um, but that is definitely on my list. So how did you find a balance between like or a happy medium between traveling and tech? Was it just because you're working in the tech field or what was that motivation behind that? So with that, it was what got me into that was when I started that SDR job uh, in cybersecurity. And I realized, like, after, the, you know, those few months, I'm like, this ain't, this ain't it. You know, this ain't what I want to do. Like, even though it's going to be good money, it, I don't have any passion. So it's hard to sell something I don't have any passion for. And then also something I don't really understand that well. You know, so it's, first off, getting into tech is already, a, you know, a big change and then getting into cybersecurity as well, when, you, when you're you not technical at all, there's just so much information at once is just being dumped on you. And, you know, uh, it was it was a big change. So I'm like, I wanna do something that, that fulfills me, something that I actually care about, something that I'm actually passionate about. So that's what got me into like, okay, now I'm gonna look for jobs that are in industries that I love versus just taking a job that uh, pays well. So that's when I started to, you know, look around at these different travel companies Google startup companies and things like that are in the travel industry. And that led me to, you know, to the company that I am now. If I only applied for this one company, you know, it was, it was a software that I was already using. And uh, by me already using the software and knowing the product, it was super easy for me to actually get into the company because I already knew the product. I already used it. You know, I was comfortable with it. I'd already did my research, you know, for several other of their competitors to choose which company I wanted to, you know, use to run my retreats. And, you know, once I, you know, figured out I want to use that company, I ended up seeing that they were hiring. So I'm like, it's only this the company, you know, I'm meant to work for. I only applied for that one company and, you know, I ended up doing the job with them. That's so, that's so cool. Like, I, I, I can't say how many companies I applied to because I can't really remember. 
But the fact that you only applied to this one company and it was a perfect fit for you says a lot. And I always encourage people, right? I always encourage my, my mentees, my students, my tech explorers. I encourage them to do their research about different companies and then also join a company um, that you feel like you're going to be connected to. Now, you don't have to get married to the job, right? Um, but you do want to make sure that you are at least comfortable with the software. You do want to make sure that you're comfortable with the product because I think a lot of people glorify getting into tech, but they forget that once you get there, you got to actually do the work. And it's not easy at all. I will be the first to tell you that, especially for myself coming into a mid to senior level role from having a non-traditional tech background, like I'll be crying sometimes. So I'm just telling y'all that. <laughs> so I'll be like, let me get myself together. So I love yeah. that because I'm, I'm also a mental health advocate. You probably, you know, know that as well, um, Damon, but I love this, the idea of the black tech retreat because you're doing two things that I think helps with building uh, that confidence, also giving that mental clarity, that life work balance that we spoke of. You are um, um, putting together uh, a retreat that allows you to relax, right? Unwind, see and experience a different culture. And once you see and experience different cultures, you become less biased, right? People who travel know that you become less biased and you become more humble. So that also, you know, uh, translates into your everyday life as well as your 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 working life. Like once you're more relaxed, once you're more humble, and then in some cases more confident, especially speaking across cultures, you will do better at your job. That's just point blank period, right? When you when you're stressed out, when you you know you got an attitude, your money ain't right. You coming to work and you being me for no reason. <laughs> right. Like you about being on a vacation while you're at work. So I love that you uh, created this organization or this uh, company. And then I love that you have a focus on people of the Black diaspora to not only expose them to traveling, but also expose them to the tech industry. So um, I know you've been uh, promoting this for a while. So I would love for you to tell everyone a little bit more about um, your company, what you what you do specifically, how often you travel and some of the um, the requirements. Definitely, definitely. So the, the Black Tech Retreat, uh, the, it, it, the BLK is, you know, the main thing I like to focus on. You know, the B stands for build, the L stands for, you know, learn, and the K stands for kick it. You know, I want to be able to build connections, learn from each other, and then also be able to kick it with each other. You know, and being able to connect on a, a deeper level that a regular networking event, you know, can't provide. So that was the main reason I wanted to, you know, really bring people together because I want to bring people together that are senior in the tech industry and then some some newcomers and being able to put those people together in a place like, you know, you're in the villa with a person for seven days. You're going to, you know, really get to know them. You're going to really get to connect. And you may be able to, you know, build a relationship with a person that will be able to help you in the future. They'll be able to, you know, help you get, that next job or maybe, you know, find a mentor, somebody who, who's where you want to be, you know, and connecting with those type of people, uh, I think will help people grow in their careers. But then also show that, you know, we are a group of people that work together. We are a group of people that, you know, can depend on each other and can, you know, really advance as a group and not just individually, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's a, a huge part of the entire idea is money just bringing us together because if we, we're only 5% of the tech industry, you know, so I want to be able to spotlight us in a great way, but then also build a relationship throughout all of these separate companies, you know, in the tech industry. I love that. I love that so much. I love that because there is there is a stigma that you know people of color especially black people do not work together or work well with others in general so i love the fact that you're focusing on that um and highlighting that within this company so what's the first trip that you have lined up and how often do you travel with this uh, retreat or how often are these retreats taking place so uh currently we have three set up for uh we have the first one is to bali indonesia uh, the second one will be in Tulum, Mexico. And then the third we're working on um, for Dakar, Senegal. So these are uh, bigger trips, but we're, we're also putting together something to where we have more smaller, intimate trips as well. So we're looking to do, you know, instead of doing three big trips, we may be looking to do, you know, 
nine to 10 smaller trips with groups of 20 versus a group of 100, you know? Uh, so we want to, you know, make an environment that works for everyone and not just because some people don't like those huge, you know, 100 person events or 200 person events. They may want that more intimate event to where they can, you know, they can be their introverted self, you know, as much as they want and, you know, and not feel like they're on the outside. So we'll be doing smaller trips and we'll be doing two to three larger trips uh, per year. I'm glad you recognize that because I'm one of those people. <laughs> That's super dope. Okay. So Damon, um, without, without taking too much more of your time, I want you to at least, you know, um, tell some of the viewers what they can expect on these trips, like what makes it stand out. Um, like talk about the fun stuff. We want to hear the fun stuff. For sure. For sure. So uh, with all of these trips, we're going to do, we're going to have, you know, different types of excursions, you know, uh, yacht parties, you know, snorkeling, ATV, uh, you know, a few, if you want to go to the club, we got, you know, we have sections when you're out at the clubs where you can go party, you know, if you want to. Um, we have different heights where you, you know, can see some cultural stuff like different waterfalls, uh, go to different temples and things like that. Uh, like, like the Tulum where you'll see, you know, some of the ruins and things like that in Tulum. Um, but it's a it's a fun event. This isn't meant to be, you know, suit and tie type of event. This is it's some cookout, okay. you know, have fun, keep real kick it type of thing. You know, we cool. we're a network, but we gonna we gonna have fun and kick it at the same time. I love that. I think that's really important. And just like you said earlier, this um this type of retreat or this type of event, right, is going to help foster those relationships and bring people together. Because, you know, we have to come together. We have to create our own community. Just applying to jobs is not is not going to cut it anymore, especially if you are an individual um, that does not have a traditional background. I would say that majority of my, my offers came from me networking heavily, 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 especially getting the offers that I ended up getting and being able to speak to to those uh, that skill set. Of course, having a great resume is great. Of course, having a great LinkedIn helps as well. But you have to have somebody on the inside sometimes that can advocate for you. So if you ever are with a company where they're having uh, layoffs or anything like that, you should be able to call one of your home homeboys or homegirls that was at the retreat with you who's actually working at a company who who they can get a, a referral bonus from bringing you in and they know that you're a, a reliable candidate. I think that this is so great. And um, I wanted to I wanted to really just talk a little bit more about how um, Damon and I got connected. If that's OK, Damon. For sure. And, and before you before you go to that, that next step, uh, I do want to mention, like like how you said, having those people that are in these different companies and things like that. But one of the things that I feel like is going to be a, a big bonding part of these trips is we're not doing like hotel rooms or where everybody just goes off on their own once, you know, the excursions or the dinners are over. We, we have, you know, villas to where it's five, six bedroom villas. You know, each each bedroom has its own bathroom to where you're actually living with these people for seven days. You know, you're actually in the villa connecting with them for seven days. You may, you know, be cooking breakfast together one day, you know, and that's going to be a different connection that you'll get if you just meet a person, you know, one time or, you know, uh, on one excursion and you go back to your hotel, you know, you're actually, you know, cooking breakfast with a person and that person, let's say they at Microsoft or one of these other companies, like, they're going to instantly remember you. You're going to instantly have a connection in because you're part of a community that really you know bonded over you know travel and you know in the household together i love that i could say so many different things i, I remember just the other day damon and i i don't know we were supposed to be talking about a whole 30 minutes but we were talking for at least two hours just about this and just the different things that we were passionate about and with that um i was just really excited just to learn a little bit more about um, his company his background this is literally only my second time being on camera with him. Um, but we actually connected on LinkedIn. Like, like I, I meet a lot of different people. We connected on LinkedIn. Um, a gentleman referred me to him, to De, to Demond, because of uh, my, my platform and things I've been doing with helping individuals break into the tech industry. Um, and uh, Demond mentioned that he had this retreat and he was looking for individuals to come and become, I guess, speakers or mentors. So we did connect on that. Um, 
but I, I ended up having other obligations and I had to pull out of that. But I still was very interested in working with Damon. So I pitched him a different uh, a different idea to still work with each other. And I was a little nervous, <laughs> but he was very receptive of that idea. And I'm excited to, to let you guys know a little bit more about what we have uh, planned together. Um, Damon and I, we are going to collaborate, right? We're actually going to collaborate on a uh, a retreat. So those smaller retreats that he mentioned, um, I'm going to actually be a, a host of those. But not only that, my my thing is to help you guys break into tech, right? I'm not just going to leave that in the background. I want to make sure that you all are not only just breaking into tech, but you also have um, the skills um, that you need to break into tech. And then you can unwind and relax afterwards, right? Some people don't want to go on a trip when they ain't got no money or they're stressing about like a job when they come back. Like, I'm one of those people. I cannot enjoy myself if I have other things in the background. And I'm sure there's other individuals like me, right? So what I wanted to int introduce you all to is the partnership between I'm Breaking Into Tech and the Black Tech Retreat. So what we're going to do is I will be hosting a career accelerator program where it will be a live six weeks uh, training where we will meet twice a week with um, all of my students. And you guys will go through a uh, specific curriculum to help you um, break into the tech industry. We'll go over your personal branding. We'll also go over your LinkedIn. We will build out your resume. We will work on networking so much so that you will start to receive um, referrals into the company. We're going to build that community. And after that, you will be uh, able to also um, do mock interviews. Um, your resume will be revamped. We'll have opportunities where you can connect with me um, offline. If you need to just reach out to me, you'll have uh, options for that as well. But you have exclusive access to me and all of the resources that I have down to the templates that I've been able to um, sell previously or just give away to other individuals um, like Frank Nunez, who's able to increase his salary by $30,000 working with me. Um, this is something that I've thought about for a while because a lot of individuals have reached out to me multiple times and said, hey, Leah, I would love to pay you like for your time. Like, can, can you however help? I thought long and hard and created a training program that will help you all navigate and break into the tech industry. But I wanted to add a little twist to it. I love to travel as well. And one great thing about working in the tech industry, especially for the companies that I work for, is you either have flexible PTO or unlimited PTO. So even though I didn't um, opt to uh, join the uh, Bali retreat this year with Damon, we're going to be working with each other biannually, um, and he is helping me organize two exclusive retreats for my Tech Career Navigator graduates. Um, all expenses will be paid. It's going to be a luxury because you know, we don't do anything less than. <laughs> So I'm super excited about that. There'll be um, opportunities in between for you all. If you don't have a passport, um, we'll have support services there to help you get a passport. It's not going to be six weeks and then go to the program. We're going to have a few months in between that for the sake of uh, those individuals getting passports. Um, now, this is this is not free. And this is not cheap. However, I, I do have um, payment options. And if you guys are interested in, in reaching out to me and learn a little bit more about that, um, this is going to offer it twice a year. And if you guys are interested, this is the perfect time to join. This will give you a smaller, more intimate um, feel. So it will only be 10 to 20 people in a class at a time. Um, you will have an opportunity to bring a spouse on the trip portion um, for an extra fee if you're interested in that. But my goal is not only to allow you guys to have a uh, enjoyable, fun experience, but I want you to break into tech. I want you to also level up in tech, and I want you also to be able to get those promotions. All right, and learn firsthand from somebody who was able to do the same thing. So super, super excited about that. Damon, um, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to work with me. Like I, This is going to be a game changer for sure. Uh, we have so many great things in store, and I can't wait for the first trip. Definitely, definitely. Me too. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think this will be a great partnership. I think, you know, we're going to help change some lives. All right. Well, thank you, Damon. This has been a great interview. Um, I hope you all took a lot from this interview with Demai. It looks like you're busy right now, either a hotel lobby or something like that. So I'm going to let you get back yeah. to it. But if you can tell um, my explorers how they can get in touch with you, um, I would greatly appreciate that. The best way to probably get in touch with me is probably on LinkedIn. I would say LinkedIn at Demond Coleman. 
Uh, and make sure you put that apostrophe behind the A, uh, D-A-M-O-N. Uh, that'll probably be the best way to reach out to me and connect and, you know, reach out at any time. You know, I'm here to help. You know, I want to help people as much as possible to break into tech and, you know, I'm here for you. All right. Well, thank you, Damon. We appreciate that. All right. Well, you have a, a good one. All right. You too. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, so you guys heard it firsthand. Damon and I are partnering with each other. This is going to be a great partnership. I'm super excited. Make sure you guys connect with him. Reach out to him if you have any questions. Um, visit his website. Also, you can connect with him directly on LinkedIn. You all know how to reach me. You can reach me on LinkedIn primarily. That's where I usually live. I do have an Instagram. I barely be on it. I do have a TikTok, and I'm barely on it. But we're trying to do better these days. So you can reach me at at um, Aaliyah underscore Nichelle and also at Aaliyah Olds or Aaliyah Nichelle on LinkedIn. But make sure that you like and subscribe and follow us um, on LinkedIn and follow anything that we have going on. We have so many different things um, that are going to be uh, happening in the next few months. You guys are going to be able to see the individual episodes from all of my co-hosts. They're uh, premiering in July. We have some other events that we're uh, streaming and other services that we will be providing individually as well. So our goal is to have fun, help you bring in the tech, and help you focus on your mental health and life-work balance. All right? Till next time. Bye. Bye.